here. Welcome Woo! to the future. Welcome to the future of Thinking This Week. Uh, I am Bianca. This I'm is Jeff. Future Jeff. Future Jeff. Yeah. What's different about Future Jeff? He's in 2018. He's in 2018. What's the status of Future Jeff's beard? Uh, it was a little out of control. Had to had to hack it back a little bit. Yeah. Okay. It's you know it's it's a shame though because the beard is real good at making your face be less cold in the wind. It's and, so um, cold here. Yeah. It's uh, I got in my car this morning and it said it said it was eight degrees, which is like mm -hmm. basically just like not applicable. It's just it's not a temperature. I read an article that said that here at Thinking HQ uh, tomorrow, the Saturday, it is going to feel like. Negative 13 degrees outside. Ooh, That's gross. perfect. And because of the way that our offices is, it's going to feel like negative 9 inside. Correct. It's it's uh, it's brutally cold in here, it too. It is very cold. We hope that you are all bundled up at home. Thank you so much for joining us. Happy New Year again. We are here with plenty of furry friends and cool stuff to talk about. Lots of cool things have happened in the past week. We're going to talk about that. And, of course, we're going to play a few games. Mm hmm play a few games, and uh, just sort of get your feel on some things. Maybe how bad uh, Jeff is going to be at competitive cooking. And the answer is <laughs> really bad. Very bad. And I am going to yell at him, and I'm going to have to censor myself just like a lot. I'll just shout beep yes. over top just, of you. I'll just drown you just, Once we start playing, just imagine a whole beep noise the whole time, <laughs> and that's pretty much accurate. Perfect. Uh, so, first, 20 great team, 2018. Woo-woo! Uh, that's that's Aaron's Aaron's nomenclature for it. Apparently, there's a there's um there's like a real term for 2018. What is it, Aaron? Oh no, I stole it from the macro. Yes, yeah, <laughs> she didn't make this. This is from the podcast. Yeah, video. but it's there's it's collaborate collaborate team, team was the one you heard. together. Yeah, it's two horses when their best friends can pull the world. Are we really going to go through this whole joke? But no, but so Aaron, yeah. so that was the one that I heard was like somebody had come up with something. So Erin's yes. come up with 20 great team. So credit to her for that one. Oh, has she? Is that how that works? That's, so that's what I, that's the story I've heard. So oh, I'm okay. sticking with it. Colin has tried to say that he said it first and gave it to me. And this is patently untrue. I, it, it's not hard to rhyme eight with great. I would it's just, yeah, I would not like to hard. say, I feel like it's just... I think everyone independently came up with it on their own. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that is correct. Okay, uh, well, uh, we hope your 2018 is whatever rhyme you would like it to be. Good. Congratulations, everybody. <laughs> so, for 2018, we have some um, hopes, some dreams, some New Year's resolutions. Yeah, we do. Um, so, mine... I'm hoping that this year, here's my hope, mm -hmm. is Blizzard announces a new Diablo. Yeah. I'm very excited. If it's an expansion for Diablo 3, great. If it's a Diablo 4, even better. What about a Diablo MMO? I mean, it's not an MMO right now, but it is it is online play. <laughs> but I mean like persistent shared world. No, I don't need that. Mm. I don't need that. I have World of Warcraft for that. I just need a nice dungeon <laughs> World of crawl. Diablo Crash. No. I just need a nice dungeon crawler that I can play, and I've played through Diablo 3 and this expansion so many times, so I'm very bored, so I would like some new <laughs> things of that. So that's my hope for 2018. It's good. Um, I'm looking forward to Black Panther coming out in February. Really, mm -hmm. really excited. Mm -hmm. We've gotten actually some new Black Panther merch on the site just this week. So if you're looking to get geared up for Black Panther like I am, you might want to check out thinkgeek.com. We have lots of cool stuff, and more is on the way. Yep. Uh, and I've been watching the trailers obsessively. And it does it look, look really good. good. It looks like it's going to be fun. Um, so I'm looking forward to that, and that's coming up really soon, so I feel like I don't have to wait that long. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, of course, Westworld Season 2. If you watched before, you know that I'm a big fan of Westworld. Season 2 is coming back. I'm very excited. Will we get to see some samurai boys? I don't know, but I really want to find out. <laughs> Uh, so those are my hopes and dreams um, for 2018. What about you? Uh, I've got one that I didn't put on my list. Eventually okay. that it gets warm. <laughs> yeah. I would like to believe that eventually I don't freeze to death in it's the like the so eight foot cold. walk between my house and my car. It's been so cold um, for so long that I can't remember. I don't remember what it's. Is. Yeah, it's it's like I get in the shower in the morning and it's this revelation. It's like oh, this is what not freezing. Okay, so. 
my three things. Okay. Uh, number one, there is Street Fighter V Arcade Edition coming out. Um, you really love that Street Fighter. I'm a big fan of pretty much any 2D fighting game. Uh, Jeff's a big fan of anything he can kick everyone else's butt at. Yes. I do like winning. <laughs> winning is my favorite uh, thing to do. So, so Street Fighter V um, Arcade Edition, probably adding in some stuff that arguably might should have been in the game in the first place. I don't know. We'll see. But I'm excited about it. Well, it's, it's here now. Yeah. Well, and and, and look, Street Fighter V has been a lot of fun. So, you know, even if it's got some flaws, everything's got some flaws. Right. Uh, Street Fighter V has been a lot of fun. So I'm looking forward to the next edition of that. <clears throat> Ready Player One. Uh, next mm -hmm. thing I am pretty pumped for. So big hit of nostalgia. I also really enjoyed the book. I was about to say, if you enjoyed the books, it yeah. looks pretty true. So I'm I'm pretty pumped for that. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's gonna be that's gonna be a lot of fun. And then I don't uh, number three for me. I don't really do New Year's resolutions. Uh, oh, because... Jeff's too good for New <laughs> no, Year's well, resolutions. No, well, I mean, it's, it just seems like it's too like long of a period. Like I don't know. I don't want to pick something that I have to do for a whole year. It says the man who made a commitment. I'm sorry, not a resolution, a commitment to journal every day, and did so, and was telling me about it. Well, so you clearly have to. It wasn't. Me I didn't. It wasn't exactly journaling. It was my to-do list. So, so, to be clear, so uh, it is different because this is just like a list of stuff that I had to do every day. And I kept track of it. So, um, my New Year's resolution-ish sort of thing is um, I make, so I, I, I like to make music and play music, and so one of the things that, that I am working on doing is getting better at sound design one of my favorite sounds. So that's my, that's my, yeah. my uh, 2018 hope and dream. I, I hope and dream that I can get better at it. Well, Jeff recently released sort of a little album, a little EP, sort of. It's a full, it's, it's a full, a full album. album. Yeah, it's, it's there. Uh, and it's called Day Glow Overdrive, and we listen to it a lot at the office, and we're all very proud of Jeff, and it's very, very good. Oh, thank you. Yeah, Spotify plays. Yay! Yay! <laughs> so look for Day Glow Overdrive on Spotify and SoundCloud. And yeah, it's everywhere. Yeah, I said that was your everywhere. slurp. You didn't save it. Well. <laughs> Whatever. It can you be can everybody's yeah, story. I'll story. take it. <laughs> uh, let us know in the comments what your uh, hopes, dreams, resolutions of far-fetched wildest imaginations for 2018 are, mm -hmm. and then we'll tell you whether or not they're going to come true. Uh, yep. Because we have a real big old magic eight ball. <laughs> this very, very overly large <laughs> Hold on magic though. eight ball. The best part about this magic eight ball, which unfortunately we're not going to be able to show you on camera, is the fact that oh, it, no, well, it is no, it's definitely not going to show up. So it has a tiny, tiny <laughs> window on the bottom of it. Yeah, it's in which it's resides a tiny, tiny pyramid that was also used in the regular size magic yeah, eight ball. So like it's a, the bottom of it is exactly the same as a regular magic eight ball. The whole other of it is just like obscenely large. <laughs> it whispers prophecy. It does. It's, it's very good. Okay, so news this week besides the magic eight ball. Yes. Well, well do you want to, before we uh, get into uh, the news, there you go. We have giveaways this week. There you go. They can't have anything for they free. Can because it's the new year. We want you to start the new year. Fine. Right? We have two awesome giveaways. They're both star themed. We have Ooh. a Stargazer watch and some space stationery. Some stationery, if you will. Ooh. Yeah, no, yes. Three out of ten, maybe. This is 2018 when we lifted up. <laughs> You're right. Dad, I um, so we have both of those things. We're giving them away at the end of the stream. There should be a link in the comments or the description of the video, depending on where you're watching it. Go ahead and click that. Enter all your information. You'll be entered to win. We'll draw your names at the end of the show. Then we will announce them live. And then we're going to send you an email. Please check your emails and respond that you want the thing and then tell us where to send it. Because if you don't respond, then we don't give them out. And that happens sometimes. And then I just keep them. It's, it's very great. sad. And now Jeff's office is full of all the cool stuff that should be yours. <laughs> um, so anyway, for giving away those two cool things, make sure that you sign up and get your name in there for a chance to win. And now we can talk about me. Okay, news. <laughs> news item number one. Bianca promised cool. I'm going to fail the deliver. Sorry. Oh, no. Wah, wah. News item number one. Your computer's been hacked. Oh, Basically, no. that's it. You've been I you've mean, been phoned by... It's very useful information. <laughs> yeah, I guess you should probably know about it. So two key vulnerabilities were announced, um, which uh, relate to Intel chips. So these could go back to computers uh, that are as old as from 1995, theoretically. theoretically um, yeah. And we hope you're not using a computer from 1995. If you are, how are you watching the stream? That's amazing. I'm very proud of you for making it work. So they've confirmed that it definitely affects up through uh, computers. 2011. Yeah, 2011. Yeah. 
Uh, and then they hypothesize that, that it, goes it goes all back, the way yeah. back to so, 1995. So the, the 2011 thing, though, by the way, to be clear, is 100% yes. of computers running an Intel chip made during or after 2011. Well, it's, it's not just Intel chips. Oh, yeah, it's um, AMD and ARM and everything yeah. else. So, but it's, it's, it's a anything huge, with a chip, basically. Pretty much so. So there's two, two major flaws, and I'm not going to get into the tech of exactly what goes on. But there's essentially a layer between the chip and the software, and the way that uh, the way that some of the information that sort of gets temporarily stored in the chip interacts with the software. There's been a vulnerability that's been discovered with two of them actually that sort of allow um, allow data to pass in ways that it shouldn't be passing, or it could be exploited in a way to sort of expose data mm -hmm. where it was previously thought to be sort of hard walled off. Mm -hmm. And now it's not. So this applies to pretty much any piece of information that moves through the processor of your computer. So if you enter a password, if you enter a credit card, anything that gets essentially at some point routed from your fingers on the keyboard or inside of a game or a software or whatever through the chip and out, uh, it could technically be intercepted. So one of these, one of these, there's um, there's like a sort of a potential or theoretical fix, and it's been in some places applied. Mm -hmm. And in the other one, uh, which is, so Meltdown has been sort of like, there are fixes coming for Meltdown. Some yeah. of these come with a really heavy performance hit, yeah. uh, like up to 30%. And this only affects Intel chips. Meltdown only affects yeah, Intel chips. And, and if, you, if you are running a, a Mac, mm -hmm. as I understand it, Meltdown has been mostly patched out. Okay. Uh, so. Well, that's good. Yeah. So that's. One out of two ain't bad. Yeah. It's still pretty bad. It's pretty bad. So um, anyway, sort of firewalling around that kernel can cause a hit from like three to thirty uh, percent on your processing. Now, don't you know? Don't don't despair too much. The truth is, uh, most of the processing doesn't sort of that you do on a day to day basis, unless you're running an older computer or you're pushing your computer to its very limits. From say nineteen ninety five. Yeah, from 1995. <laughs> you're not really hitting the ceiling, right? right? So if you have if you have something like 30% to spare. It's not that you won't feel a hit, because that's that's not exactly how chips work. They don't like you don't like have a right. bucket that you fills don't up. But feel like it's slower, you won't but... you won't feel well. You'll feel some. You'll feel some of the slowdown, but you won't necessarily feel as big of a hit as 30% sounds like you may. Right. So it's not it's not the end of the world. And of course, security and not having that's all true. of your life stolen is probably worth taking that that's hit. So. True. Um, it just sounds like work. So like, it sounds like work. So let's just like let people steal your yeah, credit cards. Yeah, that, that was the easy one to fix. <laughs> yeah, that was the easy one to fix. So uh, pretty much all platforms are equally vulnerable. You should probably spend some more time reading about this if you're interested in it. Um, it there's a lot to go into, um, and it just came out this week. It's yep. Spectre and Meltdown and Boo Hiss. What was really interesting to me is that Spectre and Meltdown, when they announced that this security flaw existed, it also came with like logos for the glitch and like a whole branding kit. So basically, yeah. they were like, let's just go ahead and brand this thing, slap a nice logo on it, let's go. Yeah. It's crazy so to me that, the... that like a, a software security flaw or, or susceptibility has its own marketing. Well, you know, the interesting thing about it is that it was it was discovered by a team of security researchers, yep. and and it seems like nobody knows for sure. I'm well, I guess somebody does, but it's not been announced. It seems like there was a plan to uh, through you know some sort of a joint statement from Intel and AMD mm -hmm. to sort of address this publicly, but the information made its way into the hands of some some pretty. I would say some like pretty dedicated reporters who uncovered this mm -hmm. and put it out for the public. And so I think what happened was, uh, and this is, this is just me speculating here, but I think one of the things that happens is when you brand something and you give it a face, people pay a little bit more attention to it. Absolutely. So giving it this sort of like branding kit, this is um, like, this is a big deal. It is a very big deal. Um, and, and, you know, people, people need to pay attention to this. And, and sort of like seeing how people got involved with net neutrality and how much attention that got, I think probably has led people to realize that even very complicated technological problems that a lot of people aren't really interested in or may not understand fully, uh, myself absolutely included right. in that list, um, if, you get, if you get people more interested and invested in it and sort of humanize things, they are more likely to participate. 
The lizards are very cute, so that helps. It's a great sort of like angry ghost. One of them looks like a Snapchat ghost. Yeah. He does. Um, but mad, he's got these little eyebrows like this. Very good. What's crazy to Someone me? Someone screenshot that, please. <laughs> New what, memes. What's crazy to me is that because of the way that this um, flaw or susceptibility was discovered, it's in between a software bug and a hardware fix, so it's very difficult to address. Mm -hmm. And it's going to require rethink rethinking the whole way that we build CPUs. They're yeah. going to have to be rebuilt. And so this is a fix that's going to come out in the next two years. Rather if than even, you know, if even that. So mm -hmm. it's, this is, it's changing, it's changing the way that we think about how these things are even processed. 2018, new computers. 2018, new CPUs. Perfect. But sort of at the expense of your current one. Do you have good news for Aaron? We do have good news. <laughs> I'm going to talk about happy fun news. Yay! Yeah, Yay. that happy fun news is that uh, Nintendo has released their um, sales data for the Nintendo Switch, and it appears that the Nintendo Switch is now the fastest selling console of all time. Yes. Which is excellent. Congratulations to our friends at Nintendo. That's really amazing. I love you, Nintendo. They also had a lot of really cool uh, statistics that went with it that I'm not going to read off this paper because I do not have any <laughs> photographic memory. 60% of Switch owners uh, own a copy of Super Mario Odyssey, while 55% own The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Uh, more than 50% of users also own Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, and 20% own Splatoon 2. I think that's really cool. I think that it means, you know, there was a time when I feel like Nintendo games sort of fell out of the sort of main stream. Mm -hmm. You Never. know, we had, some, we had some lower years, but it's really picking back up. Splatoon is excellent. Of course, Breath of the Wild was named Game of the Year, so yeah. it's obviously a good pickup. Super Mario Odyssey, you can sink thousands of hours, got to get all those moons. Yeah, it's, it's, I think that's one of the things actually that has made the Switch so appealing to people is that, you know, you pick up Assassin's Creed or you pick up, I don't know, Final Fantasy XV or whatever it is, and they're huge. Like on, on the PlayStation or the Xbox, they're just these massive games that you can dump literally weeks of time. Looking at and, you, Witcher 3. And, uh, yeah, there's another one. You just, you can just dump gajillions of hours into without feeling that you're sort of like replaying content or it's becoming stale. Right. And and Nintendo has absolutely killed it mm -hmm. on on all these titles with giving you just a ton to do. Yeah. Yeah, it's really great. Plus I love that the Switch is mobile. I can bring it with me. Mm -hmm. I can then do that millennial thing that they showed in the ads where everyone takes their own little Joy-Con and you're like at a cafe and there's coffee and you're all playing. I, we have looked like that ad. <laughs> like, that's not just marketing. It's not just an ad. It's, it's actually yeah, happened. It's just, they just real life. Better, friends. Um, so it's excellent. Now, I would like to clarify, that doesn't mean it's the best-selling console of all time, which is still a title held by the PlayStation 2, mm -hmm. which as of late 2013, which is when they stopped producing, yeah. had sold 155 units, or 150, just 150, 155, 155 million units worldwide, which is still the best selling console. It was also, if I'm not mistaken, the longest, longest exactly. running console. So it had quite a bit of time yeah. uh, to lead on the Nintendo Switch, but who knows? I think we're going to see the Switch around for a long time to come. I think that... I plan on keeping mine around for a long time to come. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of fun. And interesting fact, the console that previously held the fastest selling console uh, ever award. GameCube. No. The Wii. Good guess. Ah, though. I tried. Also a Nintendo console. Yeah. So there you go. Mm -hmm. So very cool. Hopefully lots of cool new content coming for the Switch. Uh, we already know some that are coming in uh, 2018. Kirby, Star Allies, Bayonetta, Bayonetta 2, a new Yoshi title. I'm mm -hmm. excited for that one. Me too. It looks cute. Uh, so Yoshi's lots, a good time. Lots of cool stuff coming for the Switch. I'm sure that sales will continue. But congrats to Nintendo. Uh, fastest selling console of all time, Nintendo Switch. Woo! Woo! Uh, next piece of news for this week, there's a self-driving car startup called Aurora that has teamed up with VW, VW and Hyundai. VW. VW. That's the new name. We're going to rebrand 2018. 2018 rebranding. VW's headquarters is actually just down the street. Their U.S. headquarters from us. Volkswagen did not ask us to do that. <laughs> they did not ask us to do that. But this we is get on the house. VW. There you go. There's your new marketing campaign. 
so it's a P Pittsburgh based company, Aurora Innovation. Mm -hmm. They have signed deals with both Volkswagen and Hyundai to get their self driving software into commercial service. Their plan is, uh, I think you said, to get it up and running uh, the, by 2021. They're hopeful that by 2021 mm -hmm. there will be at least a consumer prototype for a self driving car. So they haven't made too many announcements about it. It's pretty. It's all it's pretty, very hush hush. Yeah. So they, they aren't talking too much about how much they're testing or what vehicles they're using or anything, but their goal is to have the self driving car out in the market by 2021. And then it says here on the last bullet point, Jeff, tell us your feelings about self-driving cars. He I read a... the script. 2019, he read the script for the first time ever. Jeff Not for the first my... time. Maybe the third, but I did read it. I would just like to say, I put these bullet points all over our script where I asked Jeff to have his input or I make a funny joke um, and no one ever reads them. Uh, Jeff, tell us your feelings about self-driving cars. This is because I have a lot of feelings about self-driving so cars. Nice. And we, uh, we talked about this yesterday, mm -hmm. Bianca and Aaron and I did. Uh, and... That's because um, I'm an old man. Yes, that's And true. I want the kids in their self driving cars to get off my lawn. Ugh, Jeff. Or Mostly off your that. Roads. Yeah, off my roads. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think that. Uh, my thought is that self driving cars will probably become pretty pervasive as like an option, like a thing that you can tell your car, hey, drive me here or drive me there. And I do assume that you will probably start to see insurance benefits as self driving cars. Uh, I would imagine so. You know, for sort of, like you've seen those little plug-in things that they do that sort of like monitor your driving and they give you a yes. break on your insurance based on how safely you drive or whatever. Yeah, the FBI yeah, could creepy. monitor it. Yeah, but my guess is that self-driving cars probably will will uh, will exist a lot and that mm -hmm. people will use them a lot because there's a lot of convenience. But I really, I don't know, I don't think humans are going to be cool with getting into a pod thing that they just we want. that they I just that. cannot drive like that you have no control over and um I, like I don't know look we still got door open door close buttons on elevators and everybody knows they don't do anything so i think there's probably going to be <laughs> steering wheels and cars forever that's true uh I that's want my that thoughts. pod like in jurassic world i want I just want to get in close my eyes and just let who is the narrator in that pod i want that person I don't know. Did you see Jurassic World? Yes, and now yes. I can't remember. I the literally narrator. just blanked, but I want everything about that. Just it's a very it's funny. Is it's um? Somebody tell us who the narrator is in chat, please. It's a comedian. He's funny. Here, check the comments. Let, let's look at comments. That's the end of my. That's the end of my news anyway. So I'll just look at your comments. Let us know what your predictions for 2018 are. Yes. Uh, we'll tell us ask, who did the thing. Yeah, we'll ask the magic eight <laughs> ball. I got a lot. Of, I got a lot of comments. Yeah, but right here. Make we'll your that. questions yes or no answers because that's how magic eight balls work. They're very precise in their predictions, but they they have a hard time with complex questions. Jimmy Fallon. Okay. Jimmy oh yeah, Fallon. it was it was Jimmy Fallon. That's Thank right. you. Thank you, Mandy um, on Facebook. Thank you. Very I much. thought that you were starting off a prediction. With Jimmy, just Fallon. Aaron, Jimmy Fallon. Aaron magic Aaron eight balls. Oh, Jimmy Fallon. No, no. Um, Let's see how uh, the magic eight balls uh, feel about Jimmy Fallon. Jimmy Fallon. Uh, Matt Roll, Long Live the Robot Revolution. Um, Adam Michael Perez, I do want to say, just says, it's 75 here. Hmm. I don't know where you That's are. That's mean. Also, uh, the Magic 8 Ball says about Jimmy Fallon, as I see it, yes. Jimmy Fallon. Jimmy Fallon. There we go. 2018. <clears throat> Lance in Wisconsin, negative temps. I feel your pain. Wisconsin is one cold place. I know. I actually read that there's parts of the northern U.S. and Canada that are colder than Mars right now. <laughs> They're literally colder that's, than Mars. That's horrible. That's insane. That's I hate horrible. It. All the talks of low temps make me miss Pittsburgh, says David. No. Are you a crazy person? Is that what's going on? <laughs> you should be like, yes, I'm so glad that I'm not there because it's so cold there right now. Uh, hello. Uh, hi from Grant, Michigan, says uh, Margie. Hi, Margie. Hello. Hello from Phoenix, Adriana. Oh, I bet it's warm in Phoenix. Uh, Faye says, I think on Tuesday in the part of Ohio I live in, I woke up to it being at negative 11, but feels like negative 26 with crossed out X eyes. Yes, I that is negative 26. I don't like that. Uh, let's see. I feel like no one has mentioned the fact that I have this beautiful this is like holding, snozberry in my life. I'm just holding, holding our little fuzz we'll buddies get to him here. We'll later. But uh, Let's see. There oh. is no warm in Minnesota. Come to Arizona. It's 80 degrees. I was, okay, yeah, Adriana, sure. Can we stay with mean. you? <laughs> uh, Matt says, I like the best of 2017 list. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Bianca worked so hard on it. I yes. did. Uh, Sarah. Oh, Chris Berejek. Go, go, go. <laughs> Who's that? Hmm. Sarah Hoffman, we got a prediction. Okay. 
Let's get the Magic 8 Ball. Magic 8 Ball set. Sarah, Sarah Hoffman wants to know Magic 8 Ball. Will Funko make a Bud and Lou pop to go with Harley Quinn? Ooh, let's see. Magic 8 Ball says, yes, definitely. Well, there oh, you go. There you go. Magic you heard it here first. The Magic 8 Ball's got, got your back. Uh, now, Jeff, tell me who Bud and Lou are. I'm going to gatekeep you. I'm just kidding. Bud and Lou are Harley You're going to fail because I'm just going to tell you I don't know. Bud and Lou are Harley Quinn's uh, hyenas. Oh, okay. I would also like those pops. Please make them. Uh, okay, let's see. Margie, my, my, my new res resolution is not to make one. There you go. That's a good one. Keep you your options that. open. 2018. Take That's what life comes at you. Actually, I want that eight ball. It's pretty, uh, it's pretty good. Chris, question from Chris. Here we go. Will I ever grapple, will Chris ever grapple to the top of a building to rain arrows upon the deserving in 2018? Magic 8 Ball says, oh my god, it really says this. Very doubtful. <gasps> oh no. Sorry, oh. Chris Carter. Uh, in case you are unaware, uh, we have a D&D campaign here at the office. And we are referring to our Intrepid. Our, our intrepid gr grapplist. Yes. Uh, John Paul on Facebook says, does Think Geek have any sweet winter accessories? We do have lots of winter. You didn't ask the 8-Ball. <laughs> now, I don't need the I, Yeah, we don't need the 8-Ball yeah. for Let that. Let me We've tell you, tons. we have tons, and they are all on sale. We have a lot of them that are sort of fandom-based. So I know we have, like, Harry Potter uh, puffer jackets, mm -hmm. if you're into that. We have lots of warm hats. We have lots tons of, hats. of hoodies, and we have some scarves. There's one. It's like a Thor hat, and it has, um, you know, on Thor's helmet, he has those like sideburn things. I don't know what they're called. On Good. Helmet. Yes. Uh, they come down, but when you wear it as a fuzzy winter hat, <laughs> it just helmet. covers your ears, and it's all toasty. <laughs> <laughs> helmet sideburn. You know what I'm I know, about. but it's just this is the greatest phrase. They are helmet sideburns. Uh, John Fraser says hello and happy New Year, friends. Happy New Year, happy John. Year. Uh, let's see. Josie has a question for the Magic 8-Ball. Okay, let's, let's have it. Uh, will Kingdom Hearts 3 actually come out this year? Look, I already tweeted about how if it doesn't come out this year, then 2018 is a loss. So it's <laughs> <laughs> It says, ask again later. I will ask again later, Magic 8-Ball, because I want to know. <laughs> is it later now? <laughs> I'll ask it again at the end of the podcast. All right. Oh, uh, let's see. Keep sending us your questions for the Magic 8 Ball, your predictions for 2018 in a yes or no question form. And we will ask the Magic 8 Ball and it will tell you whether or not it will come true. And in the meantime, Don't we have one more for contest. Contest. One yes. more for 8 Ball? One more. Uh, Kipsia okay. says, Will I get a puppy this year? She oh, asks. Will you get a puppy really this year? So. Mm. It says, As I see it, yes. <gasps> Good. Puppy this year. Okay, it really cool. is 20 great team if you get a puppy. So we're gonna move on. Do you wanna do slurp? Do you wanna play your game? I'm ready to I'm ready to slurp, Aaron. Alright, you're ready to slurp. I'm it. ready to slurp. You slurp it up. My slurp is that this is a crazy month in terms of like star stuff that's going on. So the past three months we've had a super moon. And by the past three months I mean January, December, November. I saw the one. So it's been super moon, super moon, super moon. Really so cool. let me blow your mind. We had a super moon on on the on the second of January. Yes, I saw it. it was really on the thirty first of January, we're having another super moon, <gasps> what? which makes it hold on, hold on, which makes it a blue moon because two in a month is a blue moon. It Ooh. is also a blood moon, and there's a full lunar eclipse. So <laughs> all types of moon based star. Coolness. Yeah, so is that's that my slurp of the week is January moon stuff because it's <laughs> awesome. Moon stuff. If only, moon stuff in January. If only we had told Aaron what our slurps were because I bet that there's an excellent graphic somewhere on the internet for January. It's moon like stuff. what's the guy from the oh, ancient aliens? Where it's, like, it's moon stuff. Yeah. That's that's the that's the graphic that you have to make. So let me just screen grab that real quick. I'll just add Give that. Me a moon stuff. Perfect. Okay, here is the thing. I did not uh, pre-prepare my slurp. You know. A Bianca slurp of the week is preparedness. <laughs> uh, very slurp. separation. Uh, I have a slurp of the week. My slurp of the week is I bought a bunch of firewood. I like had a person deliver firewood to my house in anticipation of this weekend, which is going to be miserably cold out. So I'm going to spend the entire weekend. First weekend, I have no plans. <gasps> 
and I'm just going to camp next to my fire and play video games all week. And I, or week, I wish, weekend. All weekend. Uh, and that's my slurp. It's just a nice weekend of not doing anything. Great. Burning things. Of burning things. That's good. And playing games. So I'm that's into my it. Slurp. That sounds good. Okay. So our rotating segment this week um, yes. is uh, entitled In Which Jeff uh, Makes a Dummy of Himself on the Internet. Uh, it's called Cooking with Idiots. <laughs> I'm not kidding. That's what I called it in the title of this video. All right. Um, so I, I take this controller? Is yeah, that what I do here? Yes. I may have to move our screen a little bit forward. So okay. Yeah. Give so, me one second. Can you move the bus or is it broken? I don't know. The bus? There. What's a bus? Well, we're about to get on a bus. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. I've got an Xbox controller and nobody's told me yes, anything about moves. what I'm supposed to do. Oh, uh, shoot. Oh no, the bus is not moving on our on our stream. Yeah. Just do I need to restart it? Hmm. We might be having some technical difficulties some technical here, difficulties. internet friends. We were trying to play Overcooked, but it looks like based on what I can see that for some unknown reason, mm -hmm. our second capture card is uh is frozen. is frozen right, so let me try... let's move on we're going to talk about product for a second yeah can you, just um, unplug yeah, yeah. Right you talk about the shirts i'm going to talk about some stuff and then they're going to do some work and it's going to be great and this is live internet television sort of stuff so and that's that's what's up so number one we've been talking about black panther lately and bianca's super pumped for it and i'm so pumped for pumped. it everybody's pumped for it and uh, I'm going to show you this shirt, and it's going to disappear because there's a green screen behind me. But I'm, I, I promise you it's really cool. The parts that are invisible, <laughs> see the parts that are invisible? They're actually green. They're not invisible. They're On their not. screen, it looks orange, but it's not. And so we've got this great, very cool gray t-shirt. How would you feel about seeing an actual picture of it? Yeah, show us an actual picture of it yeah. on a real human. Oh, look at that shirt. It's Wait, so good. I like the one where he's hanging down. I mean, they're both good, but the one where he's hanging down is really, really good. I really like this one a lot. Yeah. So uh, we've got Black Panther hanging down from some leaves and vines and trees. The Wakandan jungle, if Yeah, you the Wakandan jungle, if you will. And then the other one that we have is a black on black. Mm -hmm. So it's sort of like a texture uh, texture on front. Yeah, um, it's and very it is, subtle. I like that. It is, yeah. So you you I get the really sort of. I uh, really can't see it in the. Um, uh, yeah, it's it's. Um, hold it's, it in between you and Jeff. It's strangely there like bright there and dark at the same time. There we go. Here with that's these a lights. good angle. Uh, so it's got, it's sort of like a a, a print that's a, um, a glossy print mm -hmm. of the of the Black Panther sort of the, the logo, the face logo there, yeah. and uh, and it's on a black shirt, and it is super cool. It sort of hangs off to the side here. It's asymmetrical. It's a neat shirt. Yeah, it's a, like. You'd look great in either one of them. It's true. Yeah. The stylized Black Panther logo. A lot of people said it looks like the Decepticon logo, which not I can true. see. <laughs> and also, that's a feature. Yeah. That's a feature, not a bug. Yep. All right. So I think, based on what I'm seeing here, that Overcooked is maybe moving on the screen again. So that means we can play, and I can be terrible, and you can laugh at me. It'll be great. Correct. All right. All right I have my controller again. All right. All right. I am in charge of this bus. But nobody's told me how to play. I don't even know what these buttons do. Are you going to tell me? Okay, okay, so do you want to plug your controller? So the point of Overcooked, for those of you who don't know, is Jeff and Bianca are going to work uh, cooperatively, more or less, in order to, in a diner dash sort of situation where they're going to try and prepare meals for hungry diners. Okay, here we go. You're going to be terrible in this pod. Okay, cool. Do I push a button? Press A Press to a. join you and go. pick your okay. chef. Choose your chef. Oh, definitely this guy. Definitely. He looks just like me. He does. Okay. And so we're loading. Oh, I like that you didn't let me see what the buttons do. That's it, cool. I didn't have any control over it, my dude. All right, so. Ready? Yeah. Okay, so you want to pick things up here, and then you can put them over here. So you take that side of the... Um, Kitchen. And you have to chop it with X and press it until it's Yeah, done. yeah. So see where it says... He's yeah, got it. Now put that. it in the soup pot. Or just trade it with... Yeah, you. no, no, yeah. no. You can just put it over here and I'll... I got you, fam. So guys, as we're playing, if you think Bianca's doing a good job, put the uh, laughing face. And if you think Jeff is doing a good job, put the thumbs up. Uh, if you're on Facebook, if you're on uh, Twitch or... What's the other one? YouTube? <laughs> just comment. Internet land. Yeah, sorry. Just comment Jeff or Bianca. All right, whoever so you think is doing a good job. 
Could you get a plate ready for her, maybe? I don't know. Could I? Where's the plate? Right there. Down there at the bottom. There you go. Now chop. Now chop. You're going to set it on fire. <laughs> now, What's... this game looks deceptive. Oh, no. Easy. Wait, why can't... Why you, can't, I why can't you put it... Oh, there I can. Okay, we're good. We're good. All is well. You want me to put that out, maybe? Yeah, and then... <laughs> <laughs> she took it away from you. This okay. is a this is a fun game. It sort of reminds me. We of got a lot of... of Biancas. We got a lot of Biancas. Yes. Okay. So see the dirty plate. You Where have to wash it. Oh, up it. in the top left there. Not in the top left. Uh, well, I oh, guess I it's see. Your yeah, top yeah, left. I got you. You have to go and take that over to the and wash in the sink. Okay. Yes. So yes. I do want to say this reminds me a bit of uh, Lovers in Dangerous Space, though. It's, it's very sort of like running Except around doing one, mania. Yeah, this one is uh, currently soupy. If you think Aaron's doing a good job yelling at them, hearts for Aaron. <laughs> Aaron, you can be our kitchen You're... manager. Yeah. Are that... you our Gordon Ramsay? <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna put two pieces of bread on the other side of your head. What? There we go. Alright, now you serve that one up. Uh, Jean Paul wants to know do you guys cook just as well in real life? Um, I'm extremely adept at cooking these things. <laughs> hey, Jeff, watch that dish. What are you doing? Jeff, I watch the dish, it. Jeff! Can you watch? Now press X. Now go over there and wash them. They're just in the sink. Oh, they they're in the sink? What are you, oh. letting them soak like a monster? She has no idea <laughs> that. I, yeah. yeah, I need a plate. <laughs> there you go. All right, I got it. No, 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 no. You made oh. it. You made it. You made it. <laughs> Serve it in the soup pot, Jeffrey. What kind of restaurant is this? It's an experience restaurant. Yeah, this is a... Uh... Yeah, Can is you a... serve that soup? It's just sitting there. <laughs> Jeff, come on! Uh, I cook far better than this in real life. This is not... Uh, well, one time his wife made pizza rolls, like handmade pizza rolls for the office, and they are the best things I've ever eaten. So... Jeff constantly taunts us with pictures and beautiful images of the things that his wife cooks, like beautiful... Oh, oh I've got it. Uh, Daniel on Facebook says, don't forget to wash your hands. If that was an option, we would. That takes all the thrill out of it, though. I mean, you gotta live on the edge a little bit. It right? looks like, uh, for some reason, our overlay might have frozen, so I just oh, swapped no. it out. I oh, know. Are people still able to see us killing it as a kitchen game? Yeah, now they all know that you're killing. No, it just froze for some reason. For for some reason, that entire thing just froze. For some reason, our capture card hates us now. Hmm. I don't know. So once you get into a rhythm with this, it's pretty, it's yeah, pretty manageable. Yeah, but then, but then it does things like you'll be in a kitchen and all the lights will turn off, or mm -hmm. you'll be on a kitchen on an iceberg, and it, your entire kitchen keeps sliding everywhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but we are killing it as a kitchen. So I would say anybody who hasn't played this should should definitely give it a. It is. They a um they just ended the mission here. Yes. I was able to restart it. We were able to restart it. Three stars! We, stars. we, did, we right. did it! Yay! Oh, new shit! Oh, he's so good. That's me. Michael on Facebook <laughs> says, uh, Jeff does dishes like my roommate. I think that's a bad thing. <laughs> and look, we have a new... A do you have a new town? Do we, we do one more? We'll do one more. Yeah, okay. do one more. And if it breaks again, I know how to fix it now, so... Sorry about that, guys. We, was, new we just oh, watched... Oh, he's so good, though. So, do the chefs have any different capabilities? Or are they, they look all the cute. same? Okay. They look cute. And one of them's a cat? Yeah, one of them is a cat. Are you worried? Jeff, where are you That's going? a fire extinguisher? <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, where I, are you going? What are you doing? I don't know. I we don't need really... to make an onion soup. Where's where the are onion the onions? Hat? They're over on your side. Jeff has hidden tomatoes under a fire extinguisher. There you go. There, nope, nope, nope. All right. Come here. It's right here. Oh, that's the tomatoes. I see what's up. Okay. okay. You, why are you trying? No. The onion soup is first. Where does it say that? Why are the two of you chopping? At the top left is where your okay, your orders are. Okay, I'm gonna take are. over um, this side because it's been abandoned. <laughs> that side's dumb. Okay. <laughs> this game is called Overcooked. For those of you asking, it's, it's very available good. on um, Switch and PS4 and Xbox One and also, also. Can we just talk about why would anyone? Put a kitchen here hey, in Jeff, the middle I have some of a road. Questions for you. You can. Can you put that? Uh, Jeff's gonna set one on fire. Pick it up. Put it in the other one. Put the, combine the two of them. Cause <laughs> there you go. Now you need a that third works. soup. You need three. Do you know how oh, counting works? No. You need a third hard. onion. 
Well, if my terrible partner would give me one, maybe I got it. I don't know what's going on here. I'm just like over here waiting for onions. I gotta chop my own onions. I gotta haul them over to this no, no, bowl no. of stuff. There we go. Um, we're thinking you should cook the fire extinguisher. <laughs> Yeah. Again, if you think Jeff is doing a good job, look, so I'm just and doing this soup myself. Bianca's doing a good job. Well, you might as well do something instead of just wandering around oh, aimlessly. What are you talking about? Look, I served our first thing. I've brought you all of the tomatoes that you need for the tomato jams. Um, tomato jams. Josie says this looks like Starbucks at a Target. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that is the perfectest. Hey guys, uh, good news, you're gonna lose the tomato soup real quick if you don't serve it. There you go. Go to the plate. There you go, Jeffrey. Not in the fire extinguisher. Where's the- Here, serve that- I can't find where to wash this plastic dish. It's over here. It's next to- it's next to Bianca. Okay. That's the wrong place for it. That's what? a fire extinguisher. You're getting in the way! Get that soup. Get the soup. They're do everyone's saying you're doing a meh job. A meh? <laughs> yeah. If you think they're doing a bad job crying face or wow face, because you can't believe how bad they are. <laughs> Look, things got real in this level. It was this not is real the before. second level. It's not dude. that hard. At some point It's you, not it's not You really don't have a clean dish where that hard. It's just um chaotic. You can take it out of the soup pot with the plate. Okay. <laughs> Bianca figured out the dash button and is now hitting Jeff. Well, he's not moving fast enough. Oh, can I serve a fire extinguisher? Is that possible? No. Lots of wow faces. They don't think you're doing a good job. <laughs> They're not doing a good job at all. Alright, what is that one? Another tomato? To be fair, that's really far away. Okay. This is Bianca. This is like um this the, is... the game of the game of Jeff, stuff being the... deliberately <laughs> Deliberately and I stupid myself. I don't understand why you guys are having such Look a Look at this time. food safety. She just threw that tomato <laughs> right on the ground. It's possible to throw things on the ground and like just, pick them just right have out. them all roll. I'm, the I'm going over here. You're the worst. <laughs> I never want to cook anything with you. Oh, that's Overcooked, the best employee to employee trust relationship tutorial. <laughs> All we're learning is we can't trust either of these two in the kitchen. This isn't even a hard level. You have 46 points. That's, that's like a lot of points. That's 46. Just kept ramming me out of the way. Look, one star. We got a star? Look that, at that. We got a star. That we star, showed up. Good for that us. That star is all yeah, me. Yes. No, that star is all me. You didn't know that nonsense. star. nonsense. Let's see what Chad has to say about our amazingly stellar performance on Overcooked. This is the best. Please don't cook the fire extinguisher, Avril. I have too much iron to the mill. That's probably true. No fighting in the kitchen, but why not? I mean, that's the best way to fight. Remember when I changed this cooking with idiots? <laughs> <laughs> I was not joking. You're right. I, I, I definitely did feel that way. <laughs> yes. That's the byline. The unofficial byline for overcooked is. It's very good. Idiots. Five second rule on tomato. Yeah, it's just wasn't on the ground for long. It's fine. Yeah, it was fine. Um, time is up and lots of people are still hungry. Yes, that's exactly right. <laughs> Uh, well, uh, one star is not a lot of stars. <laughs> I can't Very believe good. Overcooked let us, it was like, do you want to keep moving on? Do you master uh, that one? Just go on to the you're next You're great one. cookers. If you want to see us play more of stuff like this, or like, do separate <laughs> streams, because like, listen, I'm all for doing a separate Overcooked stream. It would be very Just fun. Just tweet at us at ThinkGeek, yeah. or yeah. Facebook message us, mm -hmm. or email us. Find a way to reach out to Bianca, yep. Jeff, and I, because we'll do we'll do yeah. more of this if you and like I'll it. And I'll take all of those things and I'll show them to Jeff and be like, people always play games during the workday. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to give the For people what they give want. Give the people what they want. It's 20 great team. All right, well, let's talk about some stuff, because we've got cool stuff. We, we haven't been here for a while. Uh, we do sell cool stuff on the website called thinkgeek.com. We would love it if you would buy it. Uh, this is some of the cool stuff that we have here. What on earth are these things? So here's the thing. These beautiful, beautiful babies. And there uh -huh. are more of them. There's than babies them. everywhere? My children. Uh, my children. Uh, they do have actual names and they are available for uh, sale on our website. Uh -huh. However, I very deliberately did not look up what each one is named. I have also done the same. So that, no, guys! So that we can then ask each other what we think they're named. Um, so first, we're going to start with this this beautiful, um, I don't want to say it's a boy. I don't know how you feel about its gender. Maybe it's genderless. Uh, but what do you think that this is called? I think that's a hat shrimp. This is a hat shrimp. 
Yep. Uh, you can find it at thinkgeek.com hat shrimp. No. See, he's got he's got this little hat on right here. He's great. You guys are the worst. This is not a hat shrimp. This is a uh, pill bug, a little plush pill bug. <laughs> that is correct. <laughs> ding ding ding. He I need sound effects. Oh, he doesn't look as good when you take his hat off. So <laughs> maybe um, leave the hat on the maybe bug. Maybe leave the hat on. He's very cute. I love him very much. And um, also, if you like one of these in particular, tell us what you would name it. Yeah. Tell us what you would name it. All right. So what's this one then? That is, I think Bianca's cheating, by the way. I think she does know what they're called. I really don't, <laughs> by the way. Just to be clear, I really don't know what they're called. I think this is Baby Cthulhu. Yeah, he's like <laughs> he's like a Cthulhu spider. Yeah, he's got the little... He's got little, he's little, got little legs and little... Patrick uh, on Facebook guessed Dust Mite. Not true. Not oh, correct. Okay. Here's the thing. Uh, I did know the pill bug because I did have to post about him last week, but I don't know what the other ones are. So if you squeeze so this one, so he, he does his little legs. Aaron, you want to fill good. in the blank? Who's this, Aaron? Yeah, that's a sea pig. Oh, it's a, a sea, sea pig. pig. Yeah. That's actually a good name. So I like that. I have put together pictures of what they look like in real life, but I hated what these two look like in real life. <laughs> so um, so this, show them anyway. This is close up, no, this is close-up pictures of <laughs> how cute they are. They're so cute. And if you want to know what a pill bug or a sea pig Pig looks like, I guess, hit up Google Images and uh, don't say we didn't warn and you. And don't send me pictures of them. Don't say we didn't warn you. They're gross. Send them to Aaron. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, this um, I think is my favorite of them. Okay, what's that? This is, uh, this is a, let's see, I think he's yeah, an Amazon. sideways so they can see the this is an, on that. That's this is an <laughs> Amazonian satellite-eared rainforest mouse. Satellite mouse. Yeah, it's a satellite mouse. It's a little satellite mouse, obviously. Satellite mouse. Aaron, what is that really? Uh, this is an elephant shrew. Shrew. Oh, those are very good, IRL. They're very good. They have the big, long, pokey nose. However, I like satellite mouse better. And it's very good. He's got the tiniest little funny paws. The front paws are so tiny and small that they barely show up on our camera. They're very cute. Look mm -hmm. at this beautiful boy. Oh, he's what is very it? pink on our stream. What is it, though? Stream. Um, this is Harold. It's no, you've already used that name. This is Harold. You've used it before. This thing's name is Harold. Okay. But you that's a, that's a, um, I mean, obviously, that's a raspberry weasel. This is Harold. It's a raspberry weasel. You guys want to know the answer? Yes. I got it. Uh, it's a little mini pangolin. Pangolins are great. They're, They're like armored anteaters. Very cute. However, this one's name is Harold. Okay. I know that we've used Harold for the puppet names, I know. But look at him. That's a Harold. I mean, you're not wrong. All right, you want to do the last one? The last one's obviously a schnoz monkey. This one's my favorite. <laughs> look at his big old snoz. Look at it. Hold on, I'm trying to... It's real good. There we go. That's a snoz. I love him. It's... This is a snoz monkey. I agree with you, Jeff. There's, there's no other thing that it could possibly snoz, be. Snoz monkey. Would you like me to tell you you want to just call it a snoz monkey? I mean, regardless of what it's actually called. It's You're going to show it to us and it's going to be a snoz monkey, right? Like, <laughs> that's right. Here we go. Snoz monkey. It's definitely a snoz monkey. What is it actually in real life? That's a, a frilled snoz monkey. It's a proboscis monkey. A proboscis monkey. Proboscis is like the thing that a butterfly has that's its nose that goes into flowers and stuff. I can yes. see that because of its drive. So it is a snoz monkey. But here's the thing. This is a snoz monkey. Okay, very good. Uh, we have some names if you'd like to consider them. I would love to consider them. Um, I believe Pillbug was a co it had a comb over. I don't know if that's a name suggestion, but <laughs> they have one. Um, conk or a Topher. Ooh. Um, yeah, yeah. Or Liam. Those are some options for oh, that. Liam, he's very debonair. Josie calls her dog Sea Pig, so if you want to just Perfect. whatever, we'll find out what Josie's dog is named, and then we'll name the Sea Pig that. A furry blobfish. Good. Very I think that's the penguin as well. We have. John Paul says that it reminds me of Gonzo from the Muppets. True. <laughs> Correct. Yes, I think. I'm pretty sure that's where they got the inspiration. I mean, for sure. Movie. For sure, yeah. Uh, okay. So these are all excellent and uh, they are available for sale now, thinkgeek.com. Yes. Um, except don't just type in Harold and expect anything to pop yeah, up. Yeah, you're going to have to, you're you're gonna gonna have to, to translate our nonsense names. Um, we also we just talked about the shirts, so those are new. Yep, we've talked about the shirts. Uh, we've talked about these beautiful boys. We also we've got a, a giant magic eight ball, which you've seen in action. And you want to ask it some more questions? 
I've got a few. I've got, uh, let's, let's see. Should you at home right now, all of you go to thinkgeek.com and buy a Magic 8 ball? It's going to say no. It's you definitely going to say no, yes. No, it legitimately just says yes. It just oh, says yes. Nothing else, it just says yes. All right. There um, you go. Techno Geek Girl says, Magic 8 Ball, will Red Dead Redemption 2 be a huge success? <laughs> you don't need a Magic 8 Ball for that. The answer is yes, but it does say yes, definitely. Great. I feel like this Magic 8 Ball is very empowering. This yeah. Magic 8 Ball really knows what's up. Mm -hmm. um, um, hold on, we do need to ask if uh, Kingdom Hearts 3 is going to come out this year. The answer better be yes. It says... Signs point to yes. It's a very positive. It's very positive. I feel like this, only this one side. This is the 20 grade teen eight ball. Mm -hmm. Jennifer wants to know, will everyone get better at chopping veggies? Definitely <laughs> no. not. Oh, no. If, look, look, look. What does it say? Outlook not so good. Oh, no. <laughs> not so good. Uh, Cody Tucker says, will there be a Dalek scratching post for cats? <gasps> That's a great <laughs> idea. <laughs> It says, very doubtful. Oh. Uh, wow. Maybe it would scare the cats away. Could be. It might, it might exterminate, exterminate them. Exterminate them? Yeah. Okay. Uh, and our fourth product for this week, number four, that we wanted to tell you all about, make sure you knew about it. No, we don't have one. We don't have it here. We like, lost right. it. Mm -hmm. And Walmart. no one definitely stole it and took it home. It's an elder <laughs> wand lamp. <laughs> it is an elder wand lamp. It's really, really cool. The, uh, the base-ish of the lamp and the actual... Um, light mm -hmm. come out of the end of the wand, so it's the elder wand, and if you look under it's that, it's sort of illuminating into correct into the uh, the shade there. Yeah, so. it's really really cool, and it is a prop re replica of the elder wand that you see in the Harry Potter movies. It's really awesome, and it's got that Deathly Hallows um, symbol right there on mm -hmm. the lampshade. It's like a really nice subtle geeky way to illuminate your room in 2018. Perfect. Perfect. So we've got a, probably not much time left to get your entries in. Yep. Uh, if um, you want to win some stuff. Pulling them now. Aaron's pulling them now. Pulling them now. Hope you can win some in. stuff while Aaron's while Aaron's choosing lucky winners. We'll see if there's anything else going on here. I think they just want us to all play Overcooked again. Uh, <laughs> Magic. Magic Eight Ball. Will these two young folks get a raise this year? Who knows? Hey. Magic Eight Ball. Hey. What's hey. Out? Hey. <laughs> hey. Oh no. Don't count on it. Oh, goodness. Oh, oh 20 great team. 20 great team. Uh, Yuri says, Magic 8 Ball, will there be another Star Wars related French press in the future? I don't know. Why do I keep putting this back? I, I don't know. know. Will Bianca ever learn to not put that back? <laughs> it, says, it says, cannot predict now. That's that's a fairly accurate Legitimately statement. Legitimately, it says, cannot, cannot predict, predict now. now. Any other good ones? I think that's about it for now, it looks like. Do we have winners over there, Aaron? We do have winners. Who are our winners and, and, and uh, who's winning what? So the stationary set, the Outer Space stationary set, is won by Isaac G. Isaac, congratulations. And uh, this year I asked, or this year, this week I asked, what are you most looking forward to in 2018? Um, and Isaac says, being a pro programmer. Oh, awesome. That's exciting. Congratulations. Um, and then Shelly H won our Stargazers watch. Oh, and very nice. And what uh, Shelly's most looking forward to is hopefully completing a zillion projects for Ray Cosplay. Oh, One that's zillion. Cool. Shelly, send us pictures, and um, you'll hear from me pretty soon. Get an email and uh, give me your address, and I'll ship these off to you. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining us, watching us cook like idiots, and uh, spending a little bit of your 20 great teen with us. Uh, <laughs> we hope that the Magic April brought you good news. Uh, and we'll be back next week with more shenanigans, perhaps different games, more ways for us to look dumb on with the internet. free stuff for you. With free stuff for you. So you get to watch us look dumb. You get to win some free stuff, and maybe we'll keep the Magic 8 Ball around. Yeah. It seems pretty cool. It's good. <laughs> Click on over to thinkgeek.com. Take a look at the new stuff. There's some cool things there. Maybe you, we didn't we didn't list them all out. Oh, we certainly did. There was a ton so, of stuff, and we missed a week. You yeah. should you yeah. should definitely take a peek. Uh, it's, it's, it's good. There's new stuff, and then everything that you've been kind of eyeing, and maybe you're like, eh, I'll just wait. Now is the time to get it, because... We've got a Everything yeah. We've got a sale. we've got a slam and sale yeah. right now. Some of the stuff is up to eighty percent off yeah, on uh, on some of the seasonal stuff. So definitely take a look. 
find something that you'd love to have and call it your own. All right. Well, happy first week of 20 grade team. Thanks for joining us. And we will be back next week. See you. Bye.